Well, cannabis traders and investors, we're checking in on the sector again. We've had a positive vote in the House as far as progressing a legalization bill, but not a whole lot of reaction in the stocks. We'll talk about why that may be and what we are looking for going forward if we're going to see continued momentum try and shift back to the bulls. So we're certainly going to look at the charts. We're going to look at the broader markets, some Canadian names, some USA MJ names, and then we're going to look into some psychedelics. Before we get into that, just a little bit of the fundamental backdrop as to where we stand right now. So on Friday, we had the vote in the House to pass the legalization bill, making it one step closer to reality and didn't see a ton of reaction in stocks, little blips, you know, more, more a little bit of a sell the news reaction on the Canadian side of things. And just something to keep in mind, you know, why is that happening? That the people that are following this sector closely, and if you're watching this video, you're certainly one of them. If you're watching this video, you're in the 99.8th percentile of people in the world paying attention to the cannabis industry from a stock and a stock investing and trading perspective. So keep that in mind because there have been multiple times over the last 11 years where I've been trading this sector where there's been a news event that my initial reaction was, everybody knows this. Anybody paying half attention knows this. And then that news event will take place and we'll get a significant reaction. And it surprises me, but then I remind myself, oh yeah, everybody that's paying really close attention knows this, but the world doesn't know this. So just as an example, you know, there are scenarios where things can get traction in the media and lead to a more significant reaction than we would anticipate. For example, again, Friday, the we have people actually watching the god-awful boring proceedings in the government for this vote. And on top of it, and again, not a big reaction, but now over the weekend, we have some headlines coming in. Joe Rogan puts out a tweet about it. And you get some news articles. I don't know if it was the New York Times, whoever did a thing on it. And there's there are scenarios where the the 99.8 percentile of people that are not paying attention get introduced to information that to us seems like, you know, duh, we know this, but they didn't know that. So just be aware that media plays a significant role in significant moves in this sector. And it's the kind of thing if, if Joe Rogan, you know, were to have somebody on his show. If that were to happen, you know, you're going to get, essentially, if, if Joe Rogan says something, automatically you're going to have a ton of, of news outlets that are just going to cover that same story just because of the status that he has. So I'm just aware, I have no idea if that's going to be the case for this current headline, but I'm aware that a headline that to me is meaningless, we know it's going to happen, you know, anybody following this sector knows that getting through the House doesn't mean anything and everything dies in the Senate, but the headline can still get some traction that can still impact the sector. So there are other headlines coming out in the sense that Monday we've got another vote in the House for expanding medical research. It's just another headline that can add a little bit of attention. We've got news that just came out that Maryland will be voting on recreational in November. Eventually we're going to get into poll watching season. And I've done this many times over the last bunch of years where you get you determine, okay, these states are going to be voting on medical. These states are going to be voting on recreational. And then as we get closer and closer towards the end of the summer, towards early fall, you start to get the polls. And the polls give us information to help us determine probabilities of whether or not something's going to pass. And most often, we know what's going to pass and what's going to fail before the votes actually take place. Because polling, generally speaking, gives us an accurate guide of, of information. So when Colorado, you know, big... When Colorado and Washington legalized, big news, we sold off, if I'm not mistaken, we sold off shortly after in the penny stocks that I was trading at that point in time because the polls in advance told us that we were going to pass. It was priced in to a certain degree. And then the first day of sales rolled around. That was something that surprised me. The first, I'm glad I remember that because I didn't have a good example. The first day of sales in Colorado and Washington had a really bullish reaction in markets. And I was very surprised by that because it was a known event. We knew it was coming. It was the media jumping on that headline. The media was out front of these dispensaries showing a line down the street. And because of that, it led to a significant bullish reaction in the sector. And that was one scenario where I said, wait a second, we all knew this was going to happen. Why are stocks seeing a significant bullish reaction? And it was because the media was reaching people that are not paying attention to the sector like we are. So, all right, that's my fundamental spiel. And again, I care more this year about individual states and the votes in November than I do the federal 
I don't think much is going to change federally. I would love to be wrong this year, but I'm focused on individual states and individual states' votes in November. So S&P 500, trying to be a daily bull flag into next week. We did just get a headline 20 minutes ago that says Putin and Zelensky, I don't even know if that's how you, I've never said his name before. So forgive me if that is not how you say his name. I think that's how you say his name. But they're, they're meeting, not meeting. They are, I'll read it word for word so I don't misquote. Ukrainian negotiator says Russia has indicated that peace treaty drafts are advanced enough to allow for direct consultations between Putin and Zelensky, and that came from Ukraine. So those are just words until anything actually happens, just like the invasion was just words before anything happened. But the more headlines we get like that, the more it's going to start getting priced in, in terms of de-escalation. So I would not be surprised if that leads to a bit of a bullish reaction on Sunday when futures open, which may help the daily higher low be set and its attempt at a bull flag. And obviously, if you're bullish the sector, you want the broader market to confirm a daily bull flag and to confirm continuation. We're watching IWM with the sector because growth names very often trade very similarly. And it is trying to set a daily higher low. Right now, the bull break that lacked follow through, definitely a red flag for bulls. To pull back that much right after the breakout of a key zone, not a good thing. But if we do just set a daily higher low here and head back to the recent high, we can keep this move going. If we lose the daily higher lows, it's a red flag that weekly consolidation may be shaping up. And there are a ton of names in this cannabis sector who will need weekly consolidation if we're going to shape up a longer term trend change on the weekly time frame. TLRY is one of them. TLRY, big time bull move, absolutely. But if we break the low of this past week, this coming week, weekly consolidation is underway. Trend change needed for longer term trend change follow through. Daily time frame for TLRY. So we made our bull move up. We topped out with a big upper wick. Daily consolidation started and we had a big bull move Monday morning, very short lived. And here's your sell the news reaction to the vote actually passing. That big red candle is your sell the news. Decent bounce, but just a five minute downtrend to end, to end the day. So Canadian names were significantly weaker on the sell the news event than US cannabis. And one thing that you can do, I actually haven't looked at this chart, but TLRY divided by MSOS. That would be a good gauge as to who's stronger, who's weaker, Canada or the US. And we know recently, more often than not, it has been Canada leading US because that's where the liquidity is, that's where the traders are. But if we look at this chart, what does this tell me? This tells me that TLRY comparative to MSOS, it blew USMJ out of the water for six days here, seven days. But since we topped out, there has been a shift where USMJ, or at least specifically MSOS, has been holding its gains way better than TLRY. This is something that I'm going to continue to monitor because, again, I always want to know where the attention is. And it will be very notable to me if we were to see MSOS, TLRY establish an uptrend from here. Because again, that would show me capital flowing out of Canadian names into US, and US cannabis names. And you can use other names. You know, if I want to compare TCNNF to, to CGC, you can use this feature on TradingView to see who's stronger, who's weaker. I do it all the time in the crypto space in terms of determining where my money is better spent. So CGC, same thing, weekly time frame. we're in a downtrend. Anything under 961 is a weekly lower high. If this inside bar breaks bare, then weekly consolidation is underway and the trend change is needed. When's the last time we've seen a weekly higher low and a higher high on CGC? And your answer is it has not happened since we topped out over a year ago, over $56. So same thing with MSOS. We haven't confirmed a weekly trend change since all time highs. That's what we're watching for a notable shift. Again, I'm looking for, show me it's different this time. Show me on the chart that it is different than the last three bounces we've seen in the last six months. And right now we don't have that. This is different indication, but I'm watching for it. So CGC, one thing that I've been doing is I have been actively trading TLRY, scalp mindset, you know, just quick little day trades and had one good swing trade mixed in there. But other than that, mostly day trading but also looking short. So I have an MSOS swing position that I initiated uh, at near the lows of when the broader market was pulling back in fear mode. And I actually had a bigger position. I sold half of it. So I am still in a partial MSOS swing. 
But with that, so I looked at the price action on Friday and the way that myself as a day trader protects my swing positions is, okay, I wanna be holding something that's relatively stronger and I wanna be shorting something that's relatively weaker. So I held MSOS and I shorted CGC on this top fish play. What's a top fish play? It is seeing an overextended move heading towards a key resistance level that's very clear. And I make a bearish entry just under that key resistance. I put my stop just above that key resistance. Probability that I stop out is fairly high because I'm playing against short-term momentum. But if it works out, the reward is way more than the risk. So I got filled here, I think 794, pretty good fill. Even if it was 790, let's just say I put my stop at 805. I'm risking 15 cents and the potential reward from 790 ended up being 55 cents. So my potential reward was multiple times more than the risk, which means if I fail this trade three times and nail it once, I still end up green. So I like top fish and bottom fishing plays if things align. And I did hold this short all the way into the end of the day and then exited 739 or 740 right before the close because I didn't want to swing it. So that's how I'm approaching this sector. I will short things if they give me clear setups with low risk, high reward. And that's that. So CGC, daily consolidation, is underway. We do have a little lower high and lower low. Technically speaking, you can say that CGC resumed a daily downtrend when that lower high and lower low occurred. So I'm watching the weekly though as my key time frame. Can we change the weekly trend? You can also watch the two-day time frame, condense it down a little bit. Nah, I'm sticking with the weekly. This would be an inverse head and shoulders attempt. Some other sectors, some other individual names have pulled off some inverse head and shoulders like this. But the bottom line is we can say that if the bulls are going to prove anything to us in this sector, we have to break 879. Simple statement, if CGC does not break 879, it's the same as every other time and we can fade back towards our recent lows. Specifically, and most importantly, if the broader market continues to consolidate as well. Broader market's gonna have a major impact on this sector. ACB, same deal. Anything under 490 is just a weekly lower high, currently a weekly inside bar. If it breaks bear, again, technically still in a daily uptrend. And now that I'm looking at all these charts, I'm glad I'm doing this video, two-day time frame. this is the only hope for the bulls. It's just an inverse head and shoulders attempt, change a, a prolonged downtrend to an uptrend, and that is the setup for the next couple of weeks. The burden is on bulls. If, if this does not happen, the bears keep complete long-term control. And as far as Cron and, Tia and uh, VFF and other names, they are very similar to ACB and CGC with this same setup. Now I got to look at TLRY on the two-day perspective. It's different because it was a lead bull and it already broke that key resistance, but everybody else in the sector has a similar setup. VFF is a little bit different. Let's just say Cron, ACB, and CGC need that trend change on the longer term time frame in inver inverse head and shoulders kind of trade. On to USMJ. So MSOS. Again, I look at this weekly time frame. Are we setting up a weekly trend change? For me, that's not a very clear pivot. If you're coming from a prolonged downtrend, a little dinky bounce and a little lower wick, it's not a very convincing pivot in terms of setting a higher low and a higher high. So it lacks clarity for me, long story short. So when I'm looking for clarity, I'm looking at peers and saying, okay, well, are peers shaping up the same little higher low and continuation? CRLBF is not. It's all the same bounce off the low. TCNNF is not. CURLF is not. So for me, that validates not really viewing that as a weekly trend change shaping up. Essentially, I look at that and say, man, that time frame is losing a bit of clarity for me. I can watch the weekly EMA 12, which has been resistance for four months. And I can say that 2563 is the most important resistance for me long term. But as far as looking for clarity, daily time frame, decent close at the end of the week. Again, closing near the high of the week. We did have an upper wick and it is a little bit of a double top, but we did close a lot closer to the high of week. All the Canadian names we just looked at closed at their low of the week. So on the weekly time frame, that does stand out to me a little bit. So for MSOS, what do we need from here? Definitely need to break that double top of 2145, 2150. From there, looking up at 2218 is a little level. 2563 is the most important longer term level for me. But I'm going to say that as long as we keep a higher low pattern on the daily, that bulls are seeing bounce continuation. 
So for me, any pullback on the daily, as long as we hold 1961, it'll be a higher low compared to that level. Breaking 1961 is a red flag for me. If you remember on the way up, 1955 to 1967 was a clear resistant zone right here for, we had three or four rejections from it. So to back test and hold that level, it's a good sign. That was one key for me. I forget where I said it. I might've said it in the chat room. I forget if I said it in a video, but 1955 needed to hold a back test for me to have some confidence. So my game plan now, my half position on MSOS that I have, and I forget when I entered it, it was either March 16th or 17th. And again, I did sell half, definitely a bit early, but to be in a risk-free trade, I can stop out under 1961. And if that level breaks, I will be back to all cash and I won't lose anything. And again, that's my style of trading these sectors of selling partial into the bull move, knowing that I'm playing counter long-term trends and stopping out with slim to no losses, ideally back to all cash, do it all over again next time it tries to set it up. And one of the times I'll nail it, but again, not just going to scale in blindly. CRLBF, so as far as the weekly is concerned, we have a tightening range with a low top of the bounce, held support with a higher low and anything under 818 is just a lower high. So we're scouting a weekly lower high. It has not been set yet, but it's possible that we trade within this tightening range for another few weeks. And as far as the daily perspective, you can see that we have a very wide two-day range here after earnings. And that's a range that we can trade within most of this coming week. That's the most important level for me, 675 and 569. Big red flag if 569 breaks. Bulls obviously want to break 675 to continue the bounce. TCNNF, same thing on the weekly. Anything under 2727 is just a lower high. So bulls are not proving anything to us unless we set, set up a weekly trend change back to the bulls. Daily is sideways. Keeping the higher lows going though. It's the most important factor for these bulls. Last little higher low was 1983. Little double top at 2021. Goal of the bulls is to get over that level this week to keep this move going. Normally speaking, this is a tangent now, but going back, normally speaking, retail, I don't, you know, it's the kind of thing where retail in itself is not going to re see a headline and say, oh, we passed the house. Okay, legalization and, and have an impact on TLRY and CGC and these names with massive volume. But the more illiquid names on the OTC, it might. And again, back when I was trading the sector, when there was only eight penny stocks you could choose from, if you Googled invest in marijuana, eight companies, that was a funnel effect where any little headline reaching the herd, reaching mainstream traders and investors did have an impact because of that funnel effect. But now when there's 200 different companies to choose from, that funnel effect is not the same. So it can have an impact on these OTC names, in my opinion, if there was a media blitz as far as a snowball getting attention. And that's why, in my opinion, that's something that's going to have me paying more attention to USMJ. I'm just thinking aloud as I'm formulating game plans. And essentially, the reason I think that, you know, the big money names, TLRY and CGC and Canadian names, why they are running is because you're getting the hedge funds and the professional traders that are front running and trading with the herd that then gets involved. Whereas OTC by itself is just the herd as far as retail. Obviously not only just retail, but much more retail. If you're talking about a percentage of the volume that is in these OTC names versus percentage of the volume in the Canadian uplisted names, percentage retail versus, per versus everything else, it's gonna be much higher percentage retail of total dollar volume on these OTC names. Hope that wasn't too confusing. CURLF, weekly, anything under 928 is just a lower high. Weekly EMA 12 has been resistance. Look at these rejections. It's been resistance for eight months now. And here we are testing it again. Daily higher low is our guide. Anything above 633 keeps the daily higher lows going. Higher low, higher high. Next time we consolidate, just keep the daily uptrend going. When we lose the daily uptrend, our weekly lower high is likely set. And it's then up to the long-term trend change on the weekly for the first time in a long time to get our attention. VRNOF, same thing as MSOS, just a little weekly higher low attempt. So bulls really want to get over 1070 to shift some momentum more significantly. Daily time frame, not the same kind of clarity. Big volume, big volume at the end of the day on Friday. 
So again, it's another one where, you know, is that a weekly trend change? You could say it's breaking the weekly lower highs. It's the kind of thing where if I'm an aggressive bull and I'm looking longer term, if you break 1070, that's enough for me to say, okay, maybe I want to establish a position. We got earnings. I didn't even say anything about earnings. We got earnings coming up in the sector over the next couple of weeks. And obviously we have to be paying attention to that as well. If we have bearish reaction to earnings, weekly consolidation underway to try and set a weekly high or low. If we have bullish reaction to earnings, that might create the space for the weekly trend change. So let's just say, you know, who's got earnings coming up? I guess it's Canadian names first, TLRY. Maybe we got a couple more weeks. Yeah. Anyways, be aware of earnings, but not in the immediate future. All right, where were we? Psychedelic names. So MNMD, weekly EMA 12. It rejected the last bounce attempt. It's rejecting this bounce attempt. It's just a tightening weekly equilibrium with a low, high, higher, low. Our lower high is now 127. The most important support is 91 cents. If we hold 91 cents, we remain within a multi-month tightening range. If we break 91 cents, the weekly downtrend resumes and we're looking back at the 79 cent recent low, keeping the bears in complete control. Long story short, we must break 127 to say something is different. Bulls are shifting momentum longer term in their favor. All about 127. If 127 is resistance, bulls are not proving a thing. ATAI is also extremely sideways. Key support, 481. Double bottom down there, triple bottom. Well, that's a nice bottom fishing play. 481, 481, 482. That's my kind of risk reward. So I talked about the CGC bot, the top fishing short. This is a bottom fishing play. Let's say I entered 490, put my stop under 480. I'm risking 12 cents with some slippage on the stop loss. And even if I, I didn't make that play, but anyone who makes that play already has much more reward than risk. Have to get over 560 and 580 for this weekly range to try and break bull. There's volatility coming. One thing that a tight equilibrium tells me I know that volatility is coming to the psychedelic sector within the next few weeks, where we clearly break these sideways ranges one direction or the other. CMPS, same sideways. Daily perspective, we did get a bull break here. No follow through, it was a gap up into profit taking. So still fairly sideways, but worth watching. You need to see the volume spike to know that the break is for real on these tightening ranges. May take another week or two. All right, that's where we stand in the sector. So again, I'm playing this sector very timidly. I don't know if that's the right word. I have a small, small swing exposure. I day trade it a lot more often now that the volume of volatility is back in the Canadian MJ space. I certainly day trade the Canadian names. And again, I'm not holding my breath for anything federal this year, but I am looking towards individual states and the media attention that's gonna come with that as we head into fall and winter, which is still a long ways away. So one day at a time, broader market, very important, big picture. All right, feel free to ask any questions. I appreciate you watching. We'll see you soon.